Yeah, we're back on the Sports Max Zone. It was a clash of champions as the Diamond League resumed its action earlier today in Lausanne, Switzerland. The competition featured a variety of fan favorite Olympians, world champions, and rising stars. But the major talking point stemming from the meet involved the five time world champion Shelley Ann Fraser Price withdrawing from the women's 100 meter final, 100 meters, uh, due to uh, discomfort in her hamstring and she didn't want to um, aggravate the issue. Now, to make matters worse, the double Olympic champion Elaine Thompson-Hira was disqualified after false starting, and the American Alia Hobbs won the race in 10.87, uh, just a fraction ahead of the Jamaican Sherika Jackson, finishing just behind in 10.88, and the Ivory Coast's Marie-Jose Talou finished in third spot. Now in the evening's other highlight event, Noah Lyles took the men's 200 meters in 19.56 seconds after a very poor start. He won ahead of fellow American Michael Norman who came off the turn in front. TNT's Jareem Richards, the Commonwealth champion, he finished up in third spot. We also saw action in the women's 400 meters where the Barbadian Shade Williams finished second behind the Dominican Republic's Marilady Paulino who won the race in 49.87 seconds. TNT's Kishorn Walcott, 2012 Olympic champion, missed out on a podium finish in the men's javelin. He finished fourth after throwing 83.38 meters. Now joining us to discuss today's action or track and field analyst, Leighton Levy. And uh, Leighton, let me start here, uh, probably about an hour and a half before the women's 100, or a little more than that, we got the news about Shelley Ann Fraser Price. Um, how disappointing was that? And... Um, it was a precautionary move, wasn't it? Because she still has uh, intentions for Brussels and the Diamond League final. Yeah, it was. Um, but when you look back at the season overall, it wasn't really that surprising, or it shouldn't have been, because uh, given the level of performances that we've seen from Shelly and Fraser Price so far this season, at 35, 10, 67, 10, 60, um, six times, will have a strain on those aging legs and those tiring legs. So it was not a surprise when she mentioned on, on, um, on her Facebook page that she's been feeling some tightness in her hamstring. And of course, it wouldn't go away. So therefore, as a precautionary move, they decided not to compete. Because competing at that high level does take a toll on your body. And remember, Shelly's not a spring chicken anymore. She is just in her 15th year as a senior sprinter. And, um, you know, given the the level of the, the high level of performances this season, it really isn't a surprise. I was actually surprised that she's been able to do as what she's been doing for as long as she has been this season. But it's disappointing nonetheless in the context of the race. And of course, within the context of the race as well, I think the Jamaicans actually helped to offset each other and give Alia Hobbs an opportunity to cut to, to, to mm -hmm. camp -tellers. Yeah, I want to go there now because the, the, the developments, the twists, in the event or pre-event and then right on the track itself turned out to be anticlimactic because there was something about Elaine thompson Hero's body language, even pre-race, that she looked a little um, uncomfortable. I'm not sure if that's the right word. And when the race started off, Sherika Jackson's first 10 meters were, were woeful. Well, here's the thing what happened. Sherika left the blocks early at the first attempt to start yes. and got a yellow card. And I think that threw off Elaine, who was right next to her, because I think one of the other things is that I think Sherika knows that her start is not at its best. And to get ahead of Elaine early, she probably would have to get out of the blocks a little bit better than she has been um, so far this season. Elaine, with that situation with Miss Sherika, I think just lost her concentration and came and flew out of the blocks uh, long before the gun went off. Ha that having happened and Sherry on the yellow card forced her to sit in the blocks a lot longer than she would have liked and it cost her the race because she wasn't able to get back to Alia Hobbs. So I think all of the circumstances surrounding Jamaica actually ended up um, benefiting Hobbs and, and of course hamstring, um, hamstringing the Jamaicans, no pun intended. Mm. And when you look ahead coming out of this meet to Brussels and, and the final, where would, where would today's events put the big Jamaican trio, trio who swept the Olympic and World Championship podium finishes? Well, I think given where they are in the point standings, I think it's a setback, yes, but you know, once you win the finals, I think you're pretty much set on winning the title. And I think all three Jamaicans are in position. I don't remember the exact point standings right now, 
but they're all within striking distance. I think I can't remember. Who, I don't remember the point size. So I wouldn't guess here. But I think they're all within striking distance of getting top points in Zurich once they win. So I think it, it, it's a setback, but I think it's an op, it, it's also not too um, too devastating to, the, to their chances of winning the Diamond League title. Whoever wins in Zurich, um, Shelley I think is, was second in the standings, um, and of course Sharika and Elaine were further down, but not too far behind. So I think um, given that they're still eligible for the finals, I think. You know, once they win, whoever wins that will be able to, should be able to claim the crown. Um, the Diamond, Diamond League title for 2020, 2022, sorry. Right, Leighton, I'm going to move across now to the men's 200 metres. Were you surprised by Noah Lyle's win? And, of course, a comment on Jareem Richards from Trinidad and Tobago after his brilliant Commonwealth game showing he managed third in 19.95. Um, you know, Noah Lyle's 1956. Right now, he's at a level where he's thinking that the, the belief system and, of course, obviously his preparation ha has him running real fast. 1931 at Worlds, 1956, very good time, especially considering the bad start that he had. I mean, he could have been 19.4, probably even faster as well. And, of course, you know, Michael Norman not running many 200 this season, but 1976 is pretty good. Jeremy Richards right within that wheelhouse of where he has been running all season. So, you know, not a surprise there. And, of course, I have to mention Andrew Hudson in his first Diamond League race. 20.09 is not a bad time for fifth. So it's, it was a good performance from the top from the, from the the top athletes in that race. But not a surprise that Nolas would have won. I'm surprised, though, that you're not mentioning Rashid Broadbell, 12.99, mm -hmm. the third Jamaican in history to go under, under, under 13 seconds and beating a, a stacked field with a handsome parchment and, of course, the two-time world champion um, Grant Holloway. Well, you know, Layton, storming from behind. Yeah, Leighton, I think you are speeding for us because we have two segments and we had scheduled to talk a lot okay, about well, Rashid Broadbell yeah. <laughs> in that second segment. But yes, of course, a good performance by him. And, you know, we do hope to delve a lot more into that when we jump into the second segment. One more question on Jareem before I hand over to George. Uh, do you think that, you know, a lot more work has to go into Jareem for him to be, you know, among the top two? Yeah, listen, um, 198 is, like, five years ago, 198 was probably gets you, and, it, and it's we're still, I mean, 198 was third in, in Oregon. Um, Jerry is not very far away from the, from the top sprinters in the world in the 200 mm -hmm. meters. Mm -hmm. I think he probably needs to work on his, on his early speed, and, of course, yes. there's always work to be doing on your speed endurance and your strength endurance. But if he can improve upon what we saw this season, surely he can get, he can get right there within the top the top three, two or three in the world. I think to get to 193 is a lot of work, but nobody runs 193 every day. So I think if we can get to 196s, which is not very far away from 198, given you know what we've seen from him in the past few years, I do believe that he has the potential to get there maybe next year, maybe by Paris 2024. Leighton, I think you, 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 you sold Michael Norman a little bit short there. We, we know that he is a very good combination sprinter, one, two, four. We know that he's a 400 meter specialist this year, mm. uh, or these days rather. But I, I just heard you say of his 200 meters, 1976, it was pretty good. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm astonished. And, and this is the point I was making to you last week. I was saying to you that aren't we in wonderful times, Leighton Levy, and you've seen it all for 19.76 and 19.5 change to be, you know, okay, pretty good. It's not, oh my God, jaw-dropping, wow. Because for me, these times are still among the fastest we've ever seen over the distance. And for a 400-meter specialist to drop that in the kind of field he was in, where he didn't have the comfort of knowing that if he ran well, he would beat his rivals, to me, that's a significant thing from the American. Yes, but in the context of this, George, it, to, to be a 43 runner, you have to be really fast over 200. Um, you can't be a, you can't be a 20 point 200 meter runner on 43 with any consistency. Michael Norman has proven that he's a 43 runner. So 1976 for him is a, a good time. Is it extraordinary in the context of the day? Perhaps, but for a 400 meter runner, the quality of Michael Norman, it's a good time. I mean, look. And you're right, you know, we've been spoiled by Bolt and Blake, you know, 19.3s and 19.2s and 19.4s. And of course, but you remember Xavier Carter was around 19.6, a 19.6, 200-meter um, man. 
90, what, what Bolt has done to the sport of 200 is pushed athletes to a level now where 1976 is a pretty good time. And look, Warren Ware, who I, I don't think many people would say that Warren Ware is an extraordinary sprinter, ran 19.79. Um, you know, there are many athletes out there. I mean, look at what Jerry did in... Um, in, in, in um, the Commonwealth Games, and of course, Andrew Hudson, 1987. The, the, the wheelhouse of, say, 1970 to 1975 to 1990 is what we these days consider very good times. But are they extraordinary? I don't know. I don't, I don't necessarily believe that because we've seen people run 19-1s. We've seen people run 19-2s, 19-3s, 19-4s. No lives has gone 19-5, no what, twice, and of course, 19-6 a couple of times. So 1976, while it's a very good time, is it eye-popping or eyebrow-raising? Not necessarily, not in these times. Well, well you see, I, I know that you're, you're, you're a man of the language, so when you go between good, very good, pretty good, you, you have me concerned when you say it's pretty <laughs> good one time, I mean, and you say it's very good, and you say it's good. So that, well, you've explained well, yourself. Okay, no, you've explained let, yourself. Let, let, you've explained let me yourself. Let uh, 1976 is a very good time. There you go. Yeah, because, because remember, you know, I only, I, only, I only challenged you because you said pretty good. And yeah. I'm saying pretty good is less than good and certainly not very good, but you've clarified. One more before we go to the break, Leighton. Is it, and you know the, 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 the record and the work schedule of these women, Aliyah Hobbs claiming the field today Yes, it was without Shelley and Fraser Price. Yes, it was without uh, Elaine Thompson here. But may it be a, a, a little to do with a little freshness factor as well, Leighton? Is it that she could be at this stage of the, of the season a little bit fresher than, 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 than Sherika and the rest? Yeah, she's fresher. But what you saw from that race, if, if, if Sherika did not sit in the blocks because she was probably afraid of fall starting again. There's no way Alia Hobbs what wins that race. Um, you know, Sherika is at more than a tenth faster than she. And at 60, Sherika was two or three yards behind. And, if, and, you know, they always say the race was 105, but the thing is the race is 100. So she ran out of real estate. But, you know, she's fresh up. 1081 is her PB. And she's probably been the best American so far this year. Mm -hmm. um, notwithstanding the the the, the, the Chaka Richardson's ten sevens for the last couple of years that has not yeah. brought yeah. or anything, but Alia Hobbs has been consistently probably America's best sprinter in the last couple of years. So, you know, she's fresher, yes. But if 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 the circumstances were different, mm -hmm. she would have lost today. And I'm, I'm yeah. not that is not something I'm guessing about. Yeah, we're we're up to the break. Uh... Leighton, and we're coming back to continue our discussion on the Diamond League. But just quickly, the women's 400, uh, a sweep by the Caribbean once again. Dominican Republic first and third, and Shadi Williams in second spot for the Barbadians. Pretty strong effort by them all. Absolutely. I'm very impressed with all three of them. Because one of the things, you know, um, especially for Shadi Williams, who should be really tired now, having competed at Worlds, the Commonwealth Games, and then running on the Diamond League circuit, for her to get 49-9 today running against a Paulino who would have had some freshness in her legs having not competed for the past couple of weeks. In fact, last few weeks, because of, um, you know, she had to compete in the, um, in the Commerce Games. You have to give credit to all three of them. And of course, you know, you know, Cofield, who is run a, a personal best today, outstanding performances for all three women, given the workload that they've had to carry all season long. And, um, you know, it, it just tells you the, the depth that we I remember Sean and Miller Weaver wasn't there. Mm. So you look at a situation where Caribbean has a lot of strength in the 400 meters for years yeah. to come. Because mm. Paulino and Shade and, of course, Kofield are all very young. Yeah. And so too Candice McLeod, who, is, who came forth 50.8. Yeah, and Shade prior to this season hadn't gone sub-50. And I think she has gone sub-50 now probably four times in the last seven times she has touched the yeah. track. So we, we go Absolutely. to a break. When we come back, we still have uh, some more Diamond League to talk about, including that brilliant Rashid Broadwell sprint hurdle victory over the outstanding American Holloway. Back with more after this.